Hello and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Tuesday, September the 15th. I'm Eric Wilkinson and yes, you very well may recognize me from mainstream media where I've talked about the economic data, the geopolitical environment, how that comes in to impact the overall markets with my market analysis. I do that in these daily market commentaries, but I'm going to go a little bit further for you guys and talk about the strategies in my portfolio in order to increase that overall yield uh, in and around our main portfolio and our IRAs and whatnot uh, in and around that. The best way to increase that overall yield is through options as far as I'm concerned. All right. So without further ado, let's get on with the overall economic data. We got Empire State Manufacturing here in the United States, freaking knocking it out of the park at 17, uh, expected to be 16.2. Now that's one of the highest readings we've had in a couple of years for Empire State Manufacturing. Yes, manufacturing is only, you know, less than 20% of our economy. But the fact of the matter is, is that manufacturing sector creates a lot of velocity of money that we talk about here in the daily market commentaries. That is the way to increase the economy's uh, steam engine, if you will. We did get capacity, capacity utilization coming in at 71.4, just slightly under the 17.7 that we were, or so, sorry, 71.4 expected to be 71.7. Uh, they did revise last month's number up uh, to 71.1, uh, so basically five tenths of a percent. Uh, we also got uh, industrial production coming in at 0.4%, expected to be 1.2%. Now that's a bit of a shocker with seeing that Empire State Manufacturing number really doing well. We would expect industrial production to kind of start picking up a little bit better than that. Uh, importer prices, Coming in at 0.9%, expected to be 0.5%, and revised last month's number up from 0.7% to 1.2%. Now, tomorrow, keep in mind, FOMC, so we could see markets really consolidate here ahead of that uh, as people are trying to take some money off the table ahead of that. I don't think that we are going to see anything happen in the... Uh, uh, meeting or uh, in the statement afterwards, other than the fact that they're going to keep interest rates uh, suppressed for quite some time. Now, there was some survey I saw that kind of was a laugh that people expected the next move of the Fed to be an interest rate increase. Well, okay. Well, that's probably because they can't really decrease interest rates anytime soon. That, that It doesn't give you a time frame as to when that expectation of an interest increase in interest rates is it could be two years down the road but uh you know there's nowhere really to go but up in interest rates at this point uh, when that happens is not really in the cards at this point all right so crude oil is moving higher by uh you know 80 cents today we would expect this market to start pushing a little bit especially with the manufacturing sector starting to do well again now remember we talk about Crude oil is a major component of the manufacturing sector. So if we start seeing that happening, that should give some lift to uh, crude oil. All right. Gold futures is off by about 50 cents, but sitting there right around that sweet spot we've been talking about. Uh, you know, this market is really going to be uh, determined by what the Fed says for one, but really coming up with some fiscal stimulus, which I do expect to be coming around. I you know, they're going to kind of banter back and forth because we are heading very close to an election and uh, they're trying to figure out the politics before they figure out the stimulus. All right. So then moving on to the bonds, bonds are just slightly in negative territory by about eight tenths of a percent or eight ticks. Uh, one thing to note here, we just are not able to stay above that one's 7620 area or the into the 177 handle we got up there yesterday talked about it thought we were going to stay up there but man we just started sliding uh into the day today as well uh or throughout the day yesterday and into the day today uh as people are probably you know shoring up some of those bond portfolios ahead of tomorrow's fomc but i think that we're going to see a bit of a move to the upside with the statement tomorrow all right uh vix is uh coming off at again today as we're seeing the equities start to move higher we got the dow jones industrial average up 100 points despite the fact that caterpillar came out with earnings and are missing on uh revenues by 
like 20% or something, I think was off the top of my head there. So Caterpillar not doing very well today, putting a bit of a drag on the Dow Jones there. Uh, NASDAQ, though, it is back into tech here, as we can see with the uh, NASDAQ up 186 points on the day. A lot of these techs are doing very well after having some weakness, as we can see. You know, they're, the, they're going to fall the hardest because they rallied the, the best during the uh, reopening or the pandemic um, lockdown. Uh, reopening trade still did very well. We're starting to see this V-shaped recovery, especially in manufacturing that a lot of people are fading. But today, we're seeing that the markets are starting to get a bit of a push to the upside there. E-mini S&Ps up 30 points, almost 31. Testing that value area high. It's going to be a coup to get above the nine-day simple moving average here. The market's going to try to do that. I think that we'll probably be able to. Uh, Fed going to be talking about lower interest rates. That's going to boost the equities. Also, if we get some Fed stimulus here, that's going to help equities as well. Now, if we don't get that stimulus, I think you could probably see a bit of a tantrum happen here in the equities as the markets kind of get a, a bit of a smackdown uh, if they they can't come up with anything at all. So uh, that's going to be really going to be a determining factor more so than probably even some of the economic data that we have coming down the pipe. All right. So keep your eyes out for that. Uh, with that being said, I've decided to add a couple more longs to my overall portfolio. And we'll talk about that here in a second. But you can see overnight uh, got very long, no real attempt to do anything whatsoever, even on the economic data. And I think that that is a uh, product of this is ahead of an FOMC. Nobody really wants to put a whole lot of chips on the table. Um, well ahead of the river, if you will. Uh, all right. So pin, I just want to talk about that. Look at that one penny shy of $70. I'm still short those 85 calls in there uh, against my long stock. So I'm open for a bit of a correction here to lower my overall cost basis and be able to take those short calls off. But I am still um, going to be happy to have this stock taken away from me at $85. You know, like I said, I got into this doc at $4.50. I can't shake a stick at $85. That uh, is just way too much of a, a profit ahead of any type of um, barstool, the barstool platform for gambling. I mean, it is only in Pennsylvania, so I don't think that that's going to add a whole lot to Penn's bottom line. Yes, I think more and more people have recognized Penn. It's become a household name. It's nomenclature now at this point in time, uh, thanks to Barstool. But at $85, I'm going to be more than happy to take that off, especially when it it's creating more of a multiple than some of the other casino stocks that are involved in Macau, which is a bigger uh, destination at this point than Las Vegas is. So I think that it would be an opportunity to sell out of some of my pen at $85 and go out there and buy, say, Win or another stock that hasn't had this type of move um, just based on the news. So that's what I'm going to be looking to do going forward if that happens. All right, Kroger, I decided to add a little bit of longs here. You know, we talked about with Kellogg yesterday. Well, Kroger today, uh, this stock did well on earnings. They beat on earnings and has had a smackdown very close to the point of control where the most time and volume has been spent. And that uh, may raise some eyebrows there, but we've got super low implied volatility. I believe that this market is due for a bounce. Uh, I think it was just way overdone to the downside. So I'm playing this... Um, on a move, uh, a bullish assumption, I should say. And with a bullish assumption, we're gonna be talking about buying calls, right? So I wanna get further out uh, in time. I'm out there in the January, which encompasses the next earnings cycle. So I'm gonna be able to participate in volume or volatility expanding, which is what I want, right? Volatility, we know affects the further duration options more. So when you get that really suppressed volatility, we're able to get our strike locations very close to where the underlying is currently trading. And I got in at the 35 calls, which is in line with my guidelines for you know setting up a long call strategy. Got into the January, that limits my theta decay quite, uh, quite a bit versus you know going to the nearer durations. So I'm able to 
get all of these things coming into my favor to help me out if my directional assumption starts to falter just a little bit there. Uh, so I went in, like I said, January, bought the 35 calls for a buck 53. So again, expecting a bit of a bounce here, got enough time to be right by going out there, limiting that theta decay, encompassing a binary event, which we could see some volatility expansion ahead of that uh, as well. So that can help kind of hold off on that theta decay component a little bit. You can't get rid of theta, but you can kind of offset that. And a lot of times what we talk about is using volatility to do just that. And that's why I've set that strategy up the way I have. So please follow us at Pro Trader Strategies because I do webinars where I'm drilling down on a specific strategy like the long call or the iron condors, things of that nature, uh, so that you guys know when, where, and why we're implementing a specific strategy around that assumption we come up with. It's not just picking something out of the hat, you guys. It's really having a methodology to follow in order to increase your probabilities, all right? So that's all I've got for you. Take a moment to go over the disclaimer here. As we are an educational company, I'm not trying to get you guys to go out there and buy calls in Kroger. What I'm doing is using these trading examples for you guys to show you how in and around a specific assumption we come up with based on the charts or whatever uh, is to find the right strategy for your given assumption. So please check that out at protraderstrategies.com. That's all I got. Other than if you can't take that, take it easy.